Can you imagine that what I'm doing here has something to do with starting my horse? Because the number one factor for success when starting your youngster is not to have excellent technique and strategies and whatever, but the one most important factor is the relationship you have with your horse. I'm Gabi Neuro and I'm a seriously horse obsessed girl, as you can see. I prefer to hang out with my horses than to go out and visit friends. Sometimes I don't even leave the property for weeks at a time and I just <laughs> hang out with my horses and <laughs> you should see my shoe collection. I have well many many pairs of really dirty horseshoes and even my pair of good shoes. Actually it's horseshoes I just never wore to horses. <laughs> my mission is to spread awareness about how important a good start on a saddle is and that there is a way to start horse in an absolutely fair and friendly way without using methods that rely on fear, intimidation or any flooding techniques whatsoever. Did you know that a horse does not have a built-in forward button here on the side? <laughs> so when you get on a young horse and you ask for the first steps forward, many people, while well, we're so trained to automatically use our legs to get the horse go forward, but a young horse will not understand and will not react with forward to that and oftentimes homoousian. If we close the legs on a young horse and even start tapping, the initial reflex of a horse to this is to suck backwards and if it's a really sensitive reactive horse, their reaction can even be bucking. So, and of course the horses react to this more or less, and, but you cannot know that <laughs> until you do it. So to ask a young horse the first steps forward, you need to do it different, not with your legs. So it's very important to know and to know this in little detail can prevent a lot of bucking and fearful reaction from the side of the horse. <laughs> Did you know that you do not need to push a horse forward at walk, trot and canter within the first three rides? Some horses not even within the first ten rides because the horse well, as the reason why the horse is not going forward is that the horse is out of confidence. No, how tall am I seeing, huh? Um, confidence develops. You can't force the horse to get confident. So the way to go is to just give the horse time to get confident with the whole thing and forward will develop. So that is very important to keep in mind because for many horses it can be really scary if we think that we have to push them forward and walk, trot and canter within the first three rides. Like for my girl Tara here that I started uh, last autumn, um, she's a very sensitive and easily scared character. She easily gets emotional when trotting and cantering already on the ground. And if I would push her forward, trot and canter within the first few rides when she's really not confident, I would ruin her confidence and would create a very a negative emotional association to trotting and cantering with the rider early on. That is what I really want to avoid. Did you know that bucking is not normal when introducing the scene to the saddle? And bucking is also not normal when doing the first few rides. Because bucking is ultimately a reflection that the horse is afraid and doesn't understand well enough. It's not a sign of disrespect towards what you're asking of the horse. So the way to go when a horse is bucking is to slow down, to break the steps down to smaller pieces that the horse can understand better. We can never forget that actually for the horse to have a saddle and cinch on or a ride on the back, that can be perceived for the horse's life threatening. So bucking is actually a sign for when we have gone too fast, when past our horse's red lights, so to speak. So if a horse bucks, that is always a sign that I have to go slower and break things down into smaller steps. So did you know, by the way, that if you ride a young horse, you want to start a young horse really kind and friendly, you better carry a stick in every single ride. Uh, especially uh, people who say, I want to start my horse really fair and friendly, oftentimes say, no, I do not in no way want to use a stick on my horse. But riding with a stick allows you to do a lot less with your legs, a lot less with your reins, it allows you to be light and very clear to your horse. Because a stick has many, uh, many more functions than pushing the horse forward really hard. A stick you can use it to reassure the horse, just lightly touch the horse's shoulder to help for turning. You can use it uh, for all kinds of purposes other than whacking your horse forward. A stick helps you to be more clear and friendly with your horse. Did you know that when riding a young horse, especially a sensitive horse like my girl Tara, you always want to keep your legs on. <laughs> 
I had once a student who came to me and the trouble was that her mare started uncontrollably running and barking, especially as soon as the mare felt the rider's legs. And the mare was really freshly started and things had not gone right. <laughs> That's why she came to me. And so that the horse gets oversensitive on the leg is a result that in the very, on the very first few rides that we try to not scare the horse, not spook the horse. We notice the horse is a bit sensitive and we start to ride with the legs off. So what, it, what we need to do instead is to always stay in contact with the horse's side. That the horse starts to learn that the leg is something friendly. Something that makes communication more clear for everybody. And this is also the reason why on those very first few rides <laughs> you should not use your legs, for example, to ask your horse forward. As I explained before, the initial reflex of the horse to closing the legs or kicking is to suck back or maybe to buck. And then, once this is not possible, the horse is spook and run forward. But obviously, this is not what I want to have in a young horse. I want my horse to really understand the leg, but not to be afraid of the leg. And this is why a young horse, you always want to ride with your legs on. Always stay in contact with your legs on the horse's side. Oh, I said, like we did with you? Yes. Did you know that starting a young horse actually is way easier if you do it bitless? Because the bit is, for many horses, very uncomfortable in the mouth at first, for obvious reasons. And as there's so many new impressions at once when starting a young horse, uh, defensive reactions might multiply very quickly when you'd have to communicate via the bit with a young horse, which the horse does not understand at all. So in general, when starting your horse, you're going to have way quicker and more easy results if you start your horse bitless. So did you know that if you want to make real fast progress when starting your horse, the real fast is by going slow and by giving your horse time to understand every single step with full confidence. And you cannot force a horse to be confident now and to understand now. Yes, we very easily get impressed by posts on social media where people say, my horse can do this or that on ride three or ride 10. And it's very impressive and everything. But who says that you have to do that? That is not necessary. I really very much prefer to give my horse the time to understand the two things really right and with the horse because that will later on assure that I have a confident horse and choice to work with me. Not a horse whose body has been forced into doing something but where the mind did not keep up with the learning. Did you know that pulling on two reins won't stop a young horse, especially not if the horse is in a fearful mode? This is what Mattia taught me all those years ago when I, I started her. Because horses are by nature very claustrophobic, especially if they're fearful because they don't understand or you push them a little bit too far. And then pulling on two reins will trigger this claustrophobia and what they will want to do is run even faster, get out of the situation quicker. So you want to use two reins later on when your communication is more refined and one rein to control your horse. If you found it interesting, then I have something for you that you will love. Um, I started my girl Tara, her, last year or last autumn under saddle and I have filmed every single session in real life, commented as I go along. And I will let you watch seven, the seven key sessions of it for free so that you can learn all those so important did you knows, that you know all those little important details before you go down the road to start your horse, before you start the process of starting your horse on the saddle, so that you can prevent to go down the bumpy road in the long run. So if you find this interesting, click the link down below this video or above, I don't know where it is, uh, it will lead you to a registration page where you can register and the first email with the link to the first session will be on, your, on the way to the inbox. Just to say again, it's entirely feel free. All, you can, all that can happen is that you're going to learn some really amazing stuff for the exchange of your email address. Well, I hope you found this valuable and I wish you a great day. Bye, Sarati.